Welcome to Jewish Life. I'm your host, Stuart Ain. Every week we present programs of particular interest to the Jewish community. We're presented in cooperation with the Jewish Community Relations Council of New York. My guest today is Eric Post. Since 2020, he has been the Long Island Regional Director of the American Jewish Community. He's been with that organization since 2016. And in his new role, he uh, works with the Long Island uh, leadership team uh, in doing advocacy, leadership, fundraising, working with uh, other religious groups on the island. Welcome to the program. Thanks say so much for joining us, Eric. It's a pleasure to be here, Stuart. Thank you. Thank you. We've seen a, a spike in anti-Semitic incidents, uh, not only uh, in the state, but here on Long Island. In 2021, there was a 23% increase, 24% statewide, and uh, that accounted for 15% of all the anti-Semitic incidents in the United States. And uh, 2022 hasn't been uh, any better. In fact, it's setting records as well. But what's going on? It's a great question, Stuart, and, and thank you for the question. Um, I think there's a number of things, right? So AJC always talks about being swivel-headed when it comes to anti-Semitism. We see three sources of anti-Semitism, traditionally the far right, which we've always been aware of, the men who are you know, marching with tiki torches in Charlottesville, who it's very clear who they are. We see anti-Semitism rising on the far left, um, mostly in anti-Zionism and, um, you know, speech about Israel that crosses the line into demonization, Holocaust denial, et cetera, which, off, which can lead to violence against Jews. And then we see it from various uh, religious persuasions as well, whether it's the Black Israelites that we saw in Jersey City or uh, people who, um, you know, use uh, the name of Islam uh, to... Uh, inappropriate to you know in extremist ways to to harm Jews or others. Um, so there's a lot of different reasons. I think I, I think social media as well. You're seeing a lot of amplification of uh, messaging from the far right and the far left. And I think when you put all these things together, um, you know you're seeing a real uh, dramatic increase, which is quite troubling. Right, and we're also seeing on Long Island, not only on Long Island but elsewhere in the country the Goyam Defense League distributing pamphlets. Can we talk about that? Sure. So uh, just for our listeners, the Goyam Defense League is a, I guess, if you can call them an organization, they're a group uh, who has a website who have been notoriously mostly in California, but now also in probably about a dozen cities around the U.S., uh, distributing leaflets. So what they like to do is, uh, you, you know, uh, put together, you can, you know, I'm not going <laughs> to, they have a plenty of information out there of how to do it, but the Generally, people will go on their website, uh, people that share their, their neo-Nazi ideology and their right with far right ideology, will print out some flyers, will staple it to a plastic bag with some rocks in it or some beans, throw it on people's lawns and create um, some in trying to intimidate people. Um, this has happened now in Nassau County, here on Long Island, in about four cities. It's four towns. It started in Rockwell Center. It went to Long Beach and Freeport and Oceanside. Um, and there's a very there's been a, a, a real condemnation by elected officials, which we're, we're very uh, you know pleased to see. And I believe the police have done a very nice job. Um, you know, indeed, I believe they've they've identified who the perpetrator is. Uh, but unfortunately, um, or fortunately, however you view the First Amendment, there's really nothing that they can do to arrest the individual. Um, you know, in in that matter. So I know they're ident they've identified the person. They're monitoring the person, but unfortunately, at this point they're not able to arrest the person. Well, I know uh, one municipality has actually cited the person for littering. Why, yeah, couldn't, so, that, why couldn't they do it in Nassau County? Yeah, so, I mean, I, I've been in touch obviously with the police commissioner, with the DA's office, and right. um, I think everybody is ambitious to arrest this person. And, and we know this, the real irony here is that, you know, it was one person driving around in a white Prius um, they've identified one person who is creating this mass hysteria 
um, which is so unfortunate. It really, it just shows you take one person to, to destroy or to create such, uh, you know, havoc in a community. Um, I think there is a, a great desire from AJC, from the, from the police, from the DA's office to, you know, to arrest this person. But unfortunately, at this point, to this point, there haven't been charges filed. So whether that'll change moving forward, I'm not sure. But I know Nassau County Police are the kind of the, and the DA's office are the lead on on this investigation. Well, the littering would at least get him into court. Yeah. And, uh, so we'll see um, if they, they pursue that. Um, now, this is all created by a guy named John Minadeo Jr. He's the creator of this organization, Goyam Defense League. And um, he was actually arrested uh, by Polish authorities in, uh, in late uh, 2022 um, for violating uh, the laws of Germany. He uh, picketed outside or demonstrated outside Auschwitz-Birkenau extermination and concentration camp. Uh, with a sign um, uh, basically uh, denying the Holocaust. And um, so they hit him with a, uh, you can't do that. You can do that in the United States, can't do that in Germany. It goes right. against the country's hate speech laws. Uh, so this Holocaust denier um, uh, has been arrested, uh, released shortly thereafter. But um, um, Unlike, as I say, unlike the U.S., they can they can go after them there. Um, and um, well, and this was this was I said Germany. This is in Poland, obviously Auschwitz. Um, so um, um, this is the guy also who has a, a large following on the internet. You talked about social media, and that's where he spews his hatred. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and again, I just think it's so unfortunate that. Literally on Long Island, one person, one person has created uh, so much fear and, um, you know, disturbance in the community. And um, but I do think there's a silver lining here. And I think the silver lining is that we know through AJC's survey last year on anti-Semitism that education is sorely needed among the general public, um, whereas the Jewish community sees anti-Semitism being a problem over nine and ten in the Jewish community see it as a problem, only six out of 10 in the general public see it as a problem. So clearly we have a lot of education to do. Incidents like this, at least when uh, someone who's not Jewish is getting a, a flyer um, on their lawn and they're they need they're hearing from the elected officials and the authorities and they hear it from me and Newsday and other places we've published, what this means, what the protocols of the elders of Zion means, what saying that you know these, these millennia old hatred towards Jews of Jewish power and conspiracy theories. And they understand now why saying that Jews control the media or the government is, you know, offensive. And so there is a silver lining, which is that it's an educational opportunity. Um, and, and I think that, you know, we've done our best to do that. And I think the government governmental officials have done a, a nice job of doing that. Well, I think there's some um, question about that. There was a survey that was done by the um, a conference of Jewish organizations, uh, you know, it's the it's the claims conference, claims conference that did a survey. I think it was last year. Found that 58 percent of New York's Gen Z and millennial adults could not say name a single concentration camp or yeah. ghetto, and it found that 19 percent actually believed the Jews caused the Holocaust. Right. And, and additionally, New York was found to have had the most anti-Semitic incidents of any state in 2021, as we said. Um, now, Governor Hochul has tried to redress that. Can you talk about that? Sure. So uh, it's kind of a passion project of ours at AJC Long Island. Um, we've been from the start, uh, you know, it's probably two or three years ago now, I saw that uh, Assemblywoman Nilly Rozick was holding a press conference in Queens uh, with a couple uh, elected officials and, and Holocaust survivors about this piece of legislation that she introduced, I believe at that point was for the third time, um, to audit schools on what their schools in New York State and what they're teaching on the Holocaust and to, uh, for the department, the state education department to create, uh, you know, metrics that they have to uh, achieve and implement ways for them to do that. So we got involved uh, very quickly. Um, we worked with uh, Assemblywoman Neely Rozick's office. We worked with the Senate sponsor, Anna Kaplan, 
um, both right. of whom for, for well over probably a year and a half, two years, fought for the bill. Uh, we were with them. We held a press conference at the Holocaust Memorial Intolerance Center to spread awareness. We've written in Newsday, et cetera. And, um, you know, and, and Governor Hochul signed the bill passed and Governor Hochul signed it into law about a month ago or a couple of weeks ago. And um, it's a real achievement uh, for the Jewish community and for Holocaust education, because you're 100 percent right that um, the the schools in New York State, it, it's not a, you know, there are schools that do a nice job of it. Um, and Long Island itself, I believe, has well over 100 school districts. Um, so how how can you monitor that? How can you um, implement any kind of change? Well, if the state education department does it, who oversees the hundreds of school districts in the state, um, you have a great way of increasing Holocaust education. Was it a surprise to you that New York, which does mandate Holocaust education in the schools, that the kids would be so ignorant? Well, it's a surprise when you first learn about it, but when you dig under the surface and you realize that it, all it is is words on paper that say you should teach about, you need to teach about the Holocaust, but nobody has ever, since I believe 1994, when this was implemented, nobody has ever made any effort to uh, create a curriculum to make any enforcement. So that's the problem. I mean, then once you see that, it becomes obvious that, okay, there's no doubt that these statistics exist because nobody ever did any work to ensure that they were held accountable. You talked about curriculum. Is the AJC working to develop a curriculum with the education department or the ADL or anybody doing to, doing that work? So we support, we'll, we are not in the business of educational curriculums. We're much more of an advocacy organization. I, I you know, we a hundred percent support um, other organizations. We're working, um, you know, we, we, we certainly, uh, you know, utilize relationships we have within the governor's office, within the state education department. We would work with other organizations to do that. I know there are some more grassroots efforts uh, to, uh, to do that, to get a curriculum. New Jersey, for instance, has a state curriculum. Um, you know, whenever you talk curriculum, it becomes difficult because you're getting into a, a, a large, uh, kind of bailiwick of issues and, um, you know, things potentially become uh, complicated. However, I would say it is something we are advocating for. It is something we will not write it per se, but it's something that we're, we're strongly advocating for within the governor's office. And maybe that's step 2.0 um, with the state education department. First is figuring out what schools aren't, um, you know, what schools aren't, uh, you know, following the, the mandate. And then how are they going to do that? It's really the state education department that's tasked with um, you know, getting them up to speed and creating the resources, giving them the resources, but we would be happy to um, participate in that process. You agree that a, a statewide curriculum is needed? Absolutely. I mean, you know, my wife is a teacher and I know from experience from hearing her and other teachers that if you give them something to teach that is off the shelf that they can, they know is approved by the state, they know is uh, ready to go and they can learn it and teach it, uh, you know, rather than spending time to cobble together their own resources, to go to other organizations, to talk about funding, funding's an, always, is an issue. So if you have to pay for it, um, absolutely. I think it's it's key. That's the next step is curriculum. I know the PBS, the Public Broadcasting Service is uh, coming up with uh, suggested ideas and, and whatnot in conjunction with the uh, Ken Burns documentary, uh, America and the Holocaust, and mm -hmm. that, that aired. In, in September of 2022, uh, a six part, uh, uh, a three part, six hour uh, documentary that talked about what happened during the Holocaust. What did the United States do? What did they know? What did the citizens do? And, uh, and, and why not enough was done to save the Jews of Europe? Um, the, uh, yeah, so th th there's one area that could be explored. Absolutely. I mean, I really believe that the main issue besides obviously defending Israel, besides, you know, fending off, uh, you know, particularly um, anti-Semitism from the right and the left is uh, Holocaust, ed Holocaust education, because um, we've seen during COVID this issue of, you know, people wearing, wearing yellow stars, you know, to, to, to fight vaccine mandates and so much misinformation, even members of Congress, um, as, as, as late as, as uh, uh, last week, at the end of last week, there are members of Congress that are making Holocaust analogies to President Biden's speech about, uh, you know, the, the state of democracy in America. So 
uh, it is needed. It is the, I think it's the, the, you know, a, you know, Jewish organizations like AJC need to continue to be on the forefront of, you know, of advocating for Holocaust education. I know it's a priority of ours and it'll continue to be a priority. And um, we're, we work with other organizations to do that. Yes, yeah, I think so. And what was the line you, you teach to the test? So if it gets on the board of regions, if they, the kids take these regions, I think, in New York State, mm -hmm. and maybe if the questions could be added to the regions, um, that would be one way to make sure that something is taught. Right. Definitely. Yes. Uh, and not only did we see the uh, the um, leaflets, but we also saw some um, swastikas placed on uh, on major sites. For instance, in Hempstead Town, someone put uh, uh, anti-Semitic graffiti on a sign with the names elect of elected officials outside of town hall. Do you recall that? Yeah, absolutely. I think that was last week or the week before. And there was just this weekend at Cedar Creek Park in Seaford, I believe it was, um, some swastikas etched in a bathroom stall. But uh, I'm, I'm not as concerned, um, you know, about these kind of incidents. I feel like, um, first of all, if you look at this police statistics, they happen regularly. Um, if you look at Nassau County or Suffolk County, unfortunately, um, the Nazi swastika has been, you know, is, is I don't want to say regularly, but every month you see examples of this happening. I think because we're in a political season, because of the issues we mentioned before about the Goyam Defense League and others, people link it together and it's, you know, it creates kind of a hysteria almost about, uh, you know, that we're at threat. And then when you look beneath the surface, who's doing these, I, I don't know if they've caught the person in Hempstead Town, but I, I would I would suggest that major overwhelming majority of these incidents are just kids who know that the Nazi swastika is a harmful, it, it's inflammatory, it's harmful. They don't know, you know, what it represents, the genocide of 6 million Jews and millions of others. But you know, the good thing is they can be educated and there are some great resources. I know the Holocaust Memorial Intolerance Center on Long Island is doing a great job of, of educating uh, children who don't know. Uh, and there's also in Suffolk County, I know the um, there are efforts being made through uh, Rabbi Moss and now Rabbi, um, the, the rabbi at, uh, at, at North Shore uh, at the synagogue and others that are really trying awesome. to educate kids. Right, right. right. Because uh, when it comes down to it, you know, these aren't people generally that are hardened right wing extremists. They're just most of them uh, are kids who just want to cause some trouble and uh, know that what they're doing is wrong, but they don't really understand the, you know, what they're doing and why it's wrong. I think the ADL said it was so pervasive that no road and no longer considering it anti-Semitic crime. It's just kids, just as you say, they just know it's wrong, so they want to be act right. out. Right. Um, th there was a, a, a website, uh, I guess up in Massachusetts, that claims to show the ties between various Massachusetts institutions and support for the, this is in quotes, support for the colonialization of Palestine. And that's raised alarms over the dangerous targeting of the Jewish community. They published a map uh, by uh, anonymous, anonymous supporters of the BDS movement that uh, suggests it being promoted by anti-Israel groups such as Boston BDS and the left-wing nonprofit Massachusetts Peace Action that claims to illustrate organizations and institutions in Massachusetts that they say are responsible for harm against Palestinians. So this map, is uh, out there and they say, oh, these are the, the target. Um, we haven't seen that here on the island, but maybe that's 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 another step that we we'll to watch out for. Yeah, um, the, the mapping project that we saw in Boston is extremely troubling, um, even, so, even so troubling that it caused certain people within the, the anti-Israel community to rebuke uh, the BDS movement in Boston. So when you know you anger people in your own camp, you know you've gone too far. And, and certain Congress people that have never uttered a positive word about Israel spoke out, um, which, which we're, we're grateful for. But the real problem there is linking American Jews to Israel in a way that's completely inappropriate. People are, are completely free to disagree with the policies of the state of Israel. They can you know, advocate politically however they wish. But what they're doing is tagging 
institutions where American Jews work and worship and live, I mean, even newspapers, hospitals, with supporting Israel um, and for calling for their, either they're harming them or, uh, you know, uh, you know, you know, divesting from them, which is, you know, completely inappropriate and is 100% anti-Semitic. We saw it in May, last May, when Hamas and Israel, the, you know, the, the tensions, uh, you know, in the war came for about a week or so. And uh, I think it's a big problem that we're, we're facing, but God willing, we won't see that on Long Island. And I, I don't think that level of organization exists on Long Island. And I don't, and I think Long Island is generally, um, doesn't have that political uh, polarization and the the level of infrastructure that you see in some other major cities like San Francisco or Boston or any areas like that. The Holocaust Museum up in Glen Cove, um, schools make regular trips there. They, they bring classes there. Do you think that is, uh, is, is uh, how, what, how important is that? For the critical, people on the critical. Um, you know, I, I have non-Jewish friends who still remember when a Holocaust survivor spoke to us in, you know, in a middle school or high school. And, you know, the real the real worrisome fact now is that when you go to the Museum of Jewish Heritage in Manhattan, you're talking to 3D images of Holocaust survivors. And I mean, what are we going to do 10, 15 years from now when we don't have any survivors left uh, to tell to be the primary resources there and tell the story? It's, it's very troubling. Well, the three D images are designed to. I think that's the purpose. They're trying. You, right. you can ask almost anything of that, and the automation now uh, will provide the answers. They sat mm -hmm. there for hours and recorded all kinds of different yeah. uh, answers to, to questions. So I think maybe that's the answer. Uh, yeah, I to, don't want to be misunderstood. I mean, I think that's wonderful technology, and I, I credit them for doing that. And that's. The next best thing but at the end of the day you can't replace being in person with a holocaust survivor and in feeling their pain and um you know i think that's the next step obviously and i think they're way ahead of them you know the curve by doing that but uh you know i, I do worry about when survivors are gone um it's only going to be easier for israel you know for uh holocaust deniers to to do their business how about the second generation are they filling in are you seeing any of that um, we're not particularly involved. I know the, the Holocaust Museum, Holocaust Memorial and Tolerance Center does a great job with that, um, with the, the next generation of um, children of survivors. And um, yeah, I think that's fantastic. I mean, those are the things we're really going to need to double down on as history goes on and as the years move on. Um, some of those things are going to be very important. Like, for instance, I, you know, growing up, I went to uh, Auschwitz and Birkenau and other con concentration camps while in high school. And documented that and, uh, you know, interacted with survivors. But when students these days, you know, 10 years from now, when my son, for instance, is in high school, he's not going to have that opportunity to interact with survivors. Um, and, you know, it's it's just, it's, it's something we need to, be, I think, be constantly thinking of. Thank God, you know, people like Steven Spielberg have done an excellent job documenting uh, you know, the stories through the Shoah Project, the Shoah Foundation, and, um, but it's going to, it's going to be an uphill battle, I think, um, moving forward. Now, I know the uh, Federation, the UJ Federation of New York has something called the Witness Project, yep. in which they pair teenagers with survivors yep. and get them to meet and, and uh, understand what actually happened there. So that's yep. another good, good project. Yep, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so tell me about the, the work of the AJC on Long Island. You're working with other communities out here. Uh, commit. Sure. So the three areas, and I'll focus on, you know, what you asked about the interfaith intergroup work. So diplomatic work, uh, we work with certain countries in the city. We work with UN ambassadors and consuls general um, on our three priority areas, supporting Israel, combating anti-Semitism, and promoting pluralism and democracy. And then a lot of legislative advocacy on the local, state, and federal level. And then the interfaith intergroup, which is fantastic. Uh, Long Island, as you know, doesn't look like it looked, you know, 30, 40 years ago. We've become such a diverse community, which is incredible. And it's, I believe, the strength of America that people can come here and develop, you know, can work and develop better ways of life. Uh, we've created something called the Community of Conscience, which is 18 different groups uh, from across uh, Nassau and Suffolk County that advocate uh, for hate crimes legislation. So we've done things like advocate for uh, the no, no Hate Act, uh, which was passed in 
uh, Congress and signed by President Trump uh, two years, two years, three years ago, um, which calls on uh, greater hate crime reporting and incentivizing police to report hate crimes, uh, because we know underreporting of hate crimes is a, a big issue uh, nationwide. Thankfully, here on Long Island, Nassau and Suffolk County report, and they do a nice job of that. Uh, but that's not the case in other cities in New York. Um, yes, yeah, so the police the departments are supposed to recruit. Right, exactly. And they're not, they're not, not doing it. Right. Uh, across the country, big cities, you know, are, are not uh, are not doing it because there's no enforcement. They don't have to. Uh, the other two bills uh, that I would mention, one, Senator Kaminsky uh, passed legislation last year on uh, establishing a cyberbullying uh, task force in Albany to advise on policy for, uh, you know, stopping cyberbullying, including obviously, you know, race, ethnicity, religion. Uh, so we did that. And then now we're really focusing on how do we improve and increase hate crime reporting among individuals on Long Island, which is sorely, sorely uh, underreported. And whether it's because of someone doesn't speak English as a first language, whether it's immigration issues, uh, whether in the Jewish community, for instance, a survey that we did last year showed that 75 percent of Jews aren't reporting incidents of hate when they occur. And it doesn't necessarily always mean a violent crime, but even if someone yells, you know, a, a, you know, an anti-Semitic term at you, et cetera. Um, and the two reasons why people don't report are that one, they don't think it's serious enough to rise to the level of uh, interest of the police. And two, they don't think anything's going to happen. So there's a, lo a lot of work that needs to happen in uh, particularly in Nassau County um, on, uh, you know, getting the word out there about what a hate crime is and, and what are the resources available to, to, you know, to get the proper service for that. Well, do you have a hotline? I mean, uh, if, I, somebody, if some, somebody says something, you're saying you should report it. Right. So how would I report it? Is the best thing to do is to call 911. Um, because in uh, Suffolk County, they'll put you right through, and Nassau likely too, they'll put you right through to a precinct and they take a report. Um, they Suffolk take County, a report? Really? On something like that? Somebody anything. says, really? Anything. And it's important because uh, let's say you're not the only person that this happens to and you're walking on the Sabbath in your area and a red Corvette keeps popping by and yelling things out the window and then your neighbor has the same experience and they report it. Well, then the police are going to come likely and, you know, circle the neighborhood on the Sabbath. And if they see a red Corvette, I guess they have reason to pull it over and to investigate who this person is. And so, yeah, everything's important. Um, I think everything is monitored. Everything is statistics. Um, it's important, I think, also because if Suffolk County or Nassau County sees that these incidents are rising and rising, they know that they need to allocate more resources to solving these problems, to investigating them. So everything, everything is important. Um, Suffolk County has a hate crimes task force. Uh, you know, we're working on hopefully establishing one in Nassau County as well, but um, there is there is definitely resources and uh, attention being paid to these issues. And uh, our goal is to really highlight uh, the underreporting and to fix some of these issues for communities, particularly that do not report to the authorities. Are most of the incidents in Nassau or Suffolk? I think it's pretty much spread. Uh, you know, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but it's it's pretty much equal, I would say, between Nassau and Suffolk County, um, you know, the ones that are reported. But what we see for an island of three million or so people, you know, you would think if you look at what goes on in the city or what goes on elsewhere, that we'd be seeing, you know, larger numbers, especially with large immigrant communities, with the mixing of different communities, with Long Island becoming so diverse. Um, I'd like to believe that uh, we are, you know, tolerant of one another and that there's no problems. But just from our group alone, our community of conscience, we speak about things that are underreported or people don't report. Um, so we know this is that what is being reported is a drop in the bucket for what really exists out there. Wow. Wow. We've been speaking with Eric Post. He's the Long Island Regional Director of the American Jewish Committee. Uh, it's been a fast half hour. Thanks so much, for Eric, and uh, appreciate you joining us. My pleasure, Stuart. Have a great Thank day. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. This has been Jewish Life. My name is Stuart Ain. Until next week. Have a good one.